it's actually recording right now, so just kind of forget about that thing. <laughs> All right. Um, but yeah, put it, watch, flip it on. It does have to be kind of line of sight, so you might try to go. Okay, guys, so you know the drill. Um, Kyle uh, is here to just kind of help you help yourself. Uh, he does not have any prepared material or anything, so I think uh, if you guys want to start to look at some of the problems, you see what questions come up as you work through, just kind of think of this as a group think. He's not here to lecture or anything. So I will go get a few more. How many people didn't make copies of the sheet? Quite a few of you. All right, that's fine. I'll, I'll go print off some. Um, so they're in, your, they're in your email boxes, as you know, so you can work through some of those. But just kind of think of this as a study session um, and uh, see what you can figure out. Big day tomorrow. What are we, 24 hours out? Pressure's on on the cell. All right, Kyle. So I think Kyle, why don't you, um, you know, give your contact information or whatever, too. Kyle will be ultimately setting up some uh, office hour type uh, for the rest of the semester, so, but we haven't figured all that out yet. So he'll give you some basic contact info. I'll go run and make some more copies. All right. It kind of, Russ just kind of ran me through everything you guys have been doing, but I'm kind of rusty, so however you guys want to start, I guess I got the book and some notes, so just tell me whatever you want to work on. What, he went through the whole, uh, <laughs> all the end. Huh? He didn't want me to tell you all the answers. He wanted me to make you guys work through it. So. Okay. Well, yeah, I would. And we're being recorded right now. <laughs> all right. So you want to go through every problem on this thing? <laughs> Great. Well. Did anybody who wants my phone number get it? All right, we're good. All right, so number one. Okay, well, the one that is two sided, the one that starts two sided. Yeah, suppose data for mom's nominal wage. All right, so suppose data for mom's nominal wage and nominal interest rate on her money market uh, account was collected for years shown in the table along with uh, the CPI and the economy's uh, unemployment rate. All right, uh, so it skips right to B for some reason. But, so B. Mom has been really happy with her pay raises each year. How much better off did her 50 cent raise make her in 2008 and show your work? All right, so does anybody wanna come up and do it? Anybody know what they're doing? Raise your hand. Nobody knows how to do this problem. <laughs> Not one person in the whole class. <laughs> All right, John, you gotta know how to do this problem. You knew everything in money making. Okay. Nothing? Come, come show us what you're doing, what? You don't have the problem? Yeah, that's the problem. Right? Yeah, you're getting one? Alright, well, we got more. Okay, let me see. Alright. Why is that thing recording? Yeah, I don't know. But, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I didn't want to call you out. No, nah, it's fine. <laughs> um, so. I think you'd have to go with, what do we got, 57, right? Raised in 2008. So. I don't know the difference between the show and the show. I don't know the difference between the show and the show. I don't know the difference between the show and the show. I don't know the difference between the show and the show. I don't know the difference between the show and the show. I don't know the difference between the show and the show. 
I'm yeah. be perfectly honest. I don't remember this. Okay, well, you yeah. start with the you start with the wage from 07. So you get so you get what's 50 that? Cent. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Pretty much. So, so. start with the um, ten bucks from two thousand and seven, the nominal wage, and then in order to find the real wage, you have to divide the uh, difference in interest. So the CPI. So it would be divided by two percent. One oh two, one point oh two, yeah, two percent increase, and then. Does anybody have a calculator? Yeah. <laughs> 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 so, yeah, exactly. Yeah, if anyone's got a calculator, I'd actually divide like that. Um, She shouldn't be happy because she actually is making 25 cents an hour less than if you adjust it to inflation. Oh boy. All right, so yeah, you're, she actually lost with the, the increase in the nominal interest, she still lost um, 25 cents on her 10 bucks. So, what you need to know <coughs> for that problem is that. She, she thinks she's been happy with her pay raises each year, but she's actually worse off from the 2% increase in, uh, in interest. So, thank you, John. All right. Can we say that she lost yeah. 25 cents worth of purchasing power? Uh, yeah, that would be more accurate. Yeah, that's exactly what All right. Thank Inflation, yeah. You want to come up and show the class how you got to that? You do that?
it's just yeah, the percentage. So uh -huh. it'll be it'll be five percent, not point oh five. <coughs> but it doesn't matter if you. So I forgot. That simple. The point zero five was just at the five percent. <coughs> Yeah, the point of two is a uh, percent change in the CPR. Yeah. 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 So it's one of two. Can you just keep it 5% minus 2% and you get 3%? Instead of changing it to the decimal? Yeah, you don't have to change it to the decimal. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Can we go to the, 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 the Wait, 
Yeah, he, he told me not to just do it for you guys. He wanted you guys to do it. Okay, really? Yeah. 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 But I mean, like, it's hard to turn like Chelsea. Like, I don't know. I just yeah, thought this. Put them on there. So which one are you talking about? The one that we just did. The one, the natural rate. Yeah, that shouldn't be on there. Right? He said that one. So, I don't know about C. <laughs> so investment flow, you get more <coughs> capital and depreciation flow, you lose capital. It's just like the. <coughs> you mean for? Mm -hmm. For C, like so they're saying when this increases, or are they just like saying something totally different? When no, yeah, that's demand. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Okay. Yeah, so. So that has nothing to do with like the graph, does it? No. Yeah, it's talking okay. about the bucket. Okay. That lid's not on there. Yeah. So it's like instead of first C, I'm like, what? It's like in terms of part C. Like, investment is like the flow variable or whatever you call it. And then there's flow and stock. And then the investment will increase your capital, and then depreciation flow will decrease your capital. And within like the year. Thank <laughs> you. 
what Darren's talking about is just that for for C, um, just the the way you want to think about it is just like the water spigot going into the cup, and the cup is capital, and like the water coming down is investment. So uh, the what you lose is depreciation from your investment. So, are there any questions about that? Everybody understand that? Why did it, why did the <coughs> quantity of capital increase the <coughs> GDP per person of 10,000 and is growing at 10%. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> 10 per year. And the United States currently has an RGDP per person of 40,000 is growing at 3.3%. Uh, the rule of 70 was um, yeah. 70 over the rate at which something is growing or like the, percent. the percent change and whatever. So you can look at China first and see, and I'll tell you how long it takes it to double. So you can look at China first, so it'd be, So you find out that, and then you have to find out how fast will ca China will catch up to the U.S. Okay. So um, I just drew a timeline. If you draw the U.S., it started at 40,000, and it's going to take them 21 years to get to 80,000. And so that's how long it'll take 21 years for China. And I just, on, the, on my timeline, I just sketched and checked. I just, like... I just went for like a few to see how far it would get, and then I did the U.S. for one. And I don't know if you have anything you want to add. Does everybody? Does that make sense, everybody? So like, if it was one sixty, then how long would it take? You just have to like go twenty eight years. If what? If what was one sixty? 
the U.S. Um, like it, if this like doubled again, <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, here's this window. How long it'll take? So, like, say, um, maybe say U.S. was growing at a faster rate. So maybe like they were growing at double the rate to where or no. I don't, I don't know for sure. I mean, it would just depend on what the rate is. And like, I mean, here they're already caught up. And so now China, and China's growing at a faster rate. So once they get to 80,000, China's going to grow faster than the U.S. is. Because so it'll take China 21 years <coughs> to take them. Yeah. It'll only take them seven more years to get to so 160. Yeah. It would take but it would take the U.S. 21 more years. years. Okay, yeah. that's what I, yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> Number three, the graph. That's just an example. Like you don't actually know that number, but that's just the basically the, re the question you're asking is why did it increase? Is that what you're curious about? No, I was just wondering if I missed something. No, no, no. I forgot mine. Labor is the x-axis, and it grows by 5%, so you just multiply the 100 by 0.05 and get the extra 5%. And then same with, <laughs> same with the real GDP. Yeah. Any 
questions about that? Yeah, uh, well, um, the production function, it increases because uh, in order for, uh, <laughs> in order for um, production to increase, you have to uh, just <laughs> get more uh, like machinery. That's that's how it was uh, explained to me. It was just that uh, right here you have a hundred. Um, uh, your labor is a hundred. So say your labor is like machines, um, <coughs> it increased to a hundred and ten or whatever. Like just that's that's as simple so as I can explain. Like yeah, yeah. I mean, I could try. It'll just look pretty ugly.
Alright, anyone we'll got any questions on five? Go ahead and explain how you got the advantage. Okay. The fifty dollars would have been what your. Uh, so $1, yeah. There you go. And what is that like? How do you like? What does that tell you? Like, why do you take the real rate times? The because it fact, the real rate is factoring in inflation. Mm -hmm. Basically, you're trying to figure out how much more you can buy with your newfound interest. concept as the first problem we did. So, does anybody want to come up here and give that one a shot? formula okay so that's our formula and we're looking for in 2005 her real wage in the problem it says that her um, she made $20 an hour and the price level in 2005 was 105 times that by 100 if you put that in your calculators, you should come up with a real wage of $19.05. And then for 2010, doing the same formula, she made $25, and the price level in 2010 was 138 Multiply that by 100 you should come up with a real wage of $18.12. That just means that since inflation went up, like the, so the price level went up, and so that means inf inflation went up, now instead of having uh, $19.05 in purchasing power, now with the same exact, or with, even though she got a raise, she Who's can actually buy level? less. <coughs> she can buy less with her, ri her oh. raise. Because inflation went up. Yeah. Is it? <laughs> 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 
interested in them. Find that average percent increases on both of these. You need to first find out what the actual percent <laughs> increases were. So you have first you have twenty five dollars minus. If you want your average over five years. So she oh, got, that means she got annually a five percent raise on every right. year. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. The inflation. <coughs> <coughs> Average of 6.28 inflation. Yeah, that's where your average inflation rate is. So basically, the wages are keeping up with the inflation rate. Wait, why are you dividing it by five? Because it's over five years. Oh, okay. over the whole five year period you actually don't need to divide by five after you get the percentage there. You can just stop at twenty five percent. Oh he doesn't want the average. Uh -huh. Okay, okay cool. the average over the whole five years you can leave it twenty five percent. <coughs> She's not getting enough of a raise to cover the way inflation is going. She's not going to keep the same yeah, for the Yeah, I was just going to get this done. Which is what I originally did. Actually. And the 25% was the average nominal pay raise? Yeah.
is open. Real interest rate. It's a real interest rate. So, mm -hmm. this, this is basically your starting point for your loanable funds graph. <coughs> and whenever there's a government deficit, as described in B, you're going to have an increase. What's up? No, okay. Anyway, whenever you. No, <laughs> you're fine. Uh, Whenever you have a government deficit, it's going to increase the demand for loanable funds. You would have <laughs> demand shift out to the right. Just going to increase your interest rate and your quantity. <coughs> The situation described here is the crowding out effect because, what's up? I suppose. This range here is the deficit. could describe it. I mean, I'll just show it real quick. Basically, what happens is that households are going to increase their savings because of the government deficit. And the Ricardo Barrow effect says that it might be enough for it to offset this and put rates back to the same. And yeah, you don't have to necessarily draw it. I was just showing it to show what it would look like. So how so private uh, loanable funds are going to increase? Correct. And then their demand's going to decrease, but the government's demand will outweigh that. The demand will decrease. Okay. What's up? Households will increase their savings. So then households increase savings because of the government deficit, so it will offset some of the government's demand increase. Okay. So then there's. So the, no, the supply shifts out. The supply increases. Yeah, the government's going to raise prices for their demand. And then, like, and then, yeah, and like the book it says, they're also going to decrease their demand, but the government's demand will outweigh that. So what about savings? How can increase their savings because of the government's demand? All right, that's the last page. Down there, you just want to say anything else? This right here would be the quantity for private. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. And you could just write Q and private, and then the Q1 would be the government. <coughs> the, co the government will be used this right here, the deficit. This right here. Right here, up until this point, it's private. Right here is the government. Yep.
we're gonna pretend that at some point Russ is going to spend all of this at the same place, and then they're gonna eventually deposit it. So that would end up with the actual maximum change. If he is holding onto the money and ends up just holding onto the money, then it would cause a currency drain, which would be your answer to the number. Yeah, it's gonna end up. Yeah, that's correct. Full two thousand or into one thing. Yeah. That's why I, I guess you went to math. I, I don't think that was very clear. Oh. What does the TR stand for? Actually, this is access reserves. Let's try that again. Total reserves. Uh, TR stands for total reserve, required okay. reserves is like this. RR is required reserves. That's the required that reserve. In this case, we're gonna. He's not really saving it either. It's a negative because he's say he's taking that money out of circulation. No, this is it, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so, so, hang on, how did Russ do this? Uh, well, when you take the... What's happening over there? We're lost. What? We're lost because... No, this is wrong. Yeah, this... Can you just that real quick? Yeah, let's do that. Leave the RRR and the GRR. Ah, I'll get that. What's up? I said the same answer is just naked. Or it's just naked. Yeah. Alright, so use the change in the money supply is equal to 1 over the required reserve ratio <coughs> times the change in excess reserves. Alright, so you got uh, 1 over. 0.2, which is the uh, required reserve ratio for this problem. So 1 divided by 0.2, which uh, <coughs> you get um, one fifth of 2,000 because 1 over 2 is equal to 5, exactly. So uh, when you multiply that by 2,000, you take out 400. So you get negative 1,600, and then... Wait, what? How do you get to show off the steps? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I know. This is now becoming what it is potentially. What potentially would have happened had Russ. Okay, we're going to actually go with this. Yeah. 
We're gonna go with the scenario that I actually had. Um, I know. I'm sorry. This will be quick, I promise. So basically, what happened is that since they decided not to invest in the bank, we're going off of what potentially could have happened, which is where we could have potentially had $1,600 in excess reserves and $400 in uh, required reserves. Since this $1,600, huh? It's going to be the... That's true. This is the potential change of excess reserves had Russ actually deposited it. Since he didn't do that, this is negative. So. That $1,600 could have been loaned out. And since that money can no longer be loaned out, then this change of events happens. Well, Russ has been out, so if it's wrong, go yell at him. Yeah, I'm sorry. But <laughs> so then what's part B? Okay, part B is just asking um, what would the what would cause the change to be less than what we calculated here. If the required reserve ratio is higher, can that cost um, Actually, what we'll, he's looking for is just currency drains. Like the bank's not letting out all that it could, or <coughs> people holding on to money. Yep. Although I'm not sure how to make this less than what we Either the bank, yeah, I know, I, the bank doesn't lend out all that it can. Yeah, I don't think we've fucked that one. So, regardless. So people holding on to money or saying 